Hello and welcome to the first video in a series of tutorial videos for solving Rubik's 3x3Q. As the title of this video suggests, I'm going to be sharing with you a method for solving the entire cube without any memorization. And before I explain what I mean by that, um, I should mention that in order to watch this video, you will need to be able to know how to solve at least one side of the Rubik's Cube. If you're not able to do one side, that's fine. I have a separate video that will show you how to accomplish one side, and there should be a link on your screen right around here. And you can just go ahead and click on that, and that will uh, take you to the uh, beginner's video. And once you finish that, then you can come back and watch the rest of this video. Um, you'll also need to know the difference between two sides, or what I mean is like this side here is solved correctly, this one is not solved correctly. And if you're not able to see the difference between those two, then again, click here and watch the uh, first video. Okay, um, also, oh, one other thing. Uh, because this is the no memorization method, you're also going to need to be able to do one side uh, without using any algorithms, okay, without using any memorization. Uh, so again, if you're not able to do that, click on the link and watch the first video. Um, an algorithm, in case you're not familiar with that term, is basically a sequence of moves that you memorize uh, to solve a given task on the cube. Um, so, uh, you might ask yourself, why am I watching this video? Right? What's the, what's the value to me to watch these videos? Well, I'm going to be showing you a method. Uh, first, a method for solving edge pieces, and then a, a, method, a separate method for solving corner pieces. Okay? And as of right now, and I, again, I'm going to be doing all that without using any memorization or without using algorithms. Um, there are videos on YouTube that show different parts of the method that I'm going to be putting together, but as of right now, there's nothing quite like this on YouTube, which will take you from the beginning all the way to the end and solve a, a complete cube. Um, so I think that's the, the advantage, that's the reason that I'm making these videos. I think there's a need for it. Um, that's why I've spent a ridiculous amount of time over the last six months or so putting this method together. Um, I did get help, fortunately, from several other people on YouTube, and I'll be making some acknowledgments a little bit later on. Uh, I, I'm not saying that I put all this together myself. Um, one thing I would mention in terms of who these videos are not for, it's not for people who are speed cubers, who are interested in speed solving. This is not going to be the fastest method uh, out there. Um, but I would say that it's going to be a method that is more efficient than, say, the beginner's method. Um, if, like me, you learn to solve the cube using something like this, the seven step solution guide, um, this method is going to be more efficient. And when I say more efficient, I'm talking about a f you're going to be able to do it in a fewer number of moves. Uh, as far as speed, um, I would say that the time it's going to take you to solve the cube is probably going to be comparable to the beginner's method, right? Something like this solution guide. Um, speaking for myself, uh, I average around a minute using the beginner's method. Um, and since I've gotten proficient with this new method, I'm still averaging about one minute. Um, so I think they're pretty comparable. Um, and I think that's also a pretty good time um, using this method because, like I said, there's no memorization, there's no algorithms, so you're using a lot more brain power than you would using the beginner's method. Um, and when I say brain power, I'm saying, you know, you're going to be doing more thinking and more problem solving, all of which is more time consuming. So I think it's, uh, I think it, it, it speaks to the value of this method if you're going to be able to do it at about the same time. Um, also, another thing that's nice is that um, with this method, because I'm going to be teaching you different skills for solving different parts of the cube, you're not likely to forget those skills, right? Because you're going to be doing it by intuition, basically. Um, as opposed to the memorized algorithms, which I've noticed I've already started forgetting since I've started working on this new method. Um, it's when you're memorizing stuff, it's really a use it or lose it kind of thing. Um, so, uh, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about when I say that you're going to be able to solve the cube using fewer moves. Um, here's a situation where we have a cube that is mostly solved 
with the exception of just three corners on top. Okay, and I want to show this to you because this is really the essence of the method that I'll be showing later for solving corner pieces. Okay, um, if we try to use the beginner's method to finish solving this cube, it would take exactly 42 moves to solve these last three corners. Okay, um, but using the method that I'm going to show you, you'll be able to do it in only eight moves. And that should seem impossible to go from 42 to 8 moves, right? We're saving 34 moves. How's that possible? Um, well, let me show it to you real quick. I'm not going to go into an explanation of it yet, but I just want you to see how it would work. Uh, 8 moves would look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now, you might be wondering, why does the beginner's method take 42 moves to solve the same situation? Well, let me show it to you again. Uh, here it is again, same scenario, same three corners. Okay, With the beginner's method, part of the reason it takes so long is because you are using algorithms to solve each corner individually. So you solve one corner, then you solve another corner, then you solve the last corner. But with these eight moves that I just showed you, you're solving all three corners at the same time basically. So let me show it to you again real quick. First I'm going to solve this red, white, and blue corner like that. Then I'm going to solve this corner. Notice the match. And thirdly, I solve this corner. And I'm done. Okay, so that's just a, a quick look at the commutator. It's called a commutator. I guess I should have mentioned that. Um, a commutator is an algorithm, but it's a special type of algorithm that you don't need to memorize because you'll understand it. Now, you probably don't understand it yet because I haven't gone into an explanation of it. I'm going to save that for a later video. But suffice to say, it's very logical and it makes complete sense. And that's why you don't need to memorize it because you will understand it. Um, so, uh, one other thing to mention to you. Um, this commutator that I'm going to be showing you for solving the uh, corner pieces is the only one you will need to learn in this method. There's lots of different types of commutators out there, um, but you'll only need to learn one and that makes things a little bit easier for you. Okay, um, as I mentioned, those eight moves that I showed you make up the basis of the method that I'll show you later on for solving the corner pieces using something called a conjugate in addition to the commutator and I'll explain all that later, but using those two together, you'll be able to solve the cube regardless of how it's scrambled. Okay, I use that commutator every single time I solve the cube, and in most cases, I use it several times. So, uh, the question is, are you up for the challenge? Are you interested in learning how to solve a cube the real way, and I say the real way, meaning uh, the truer method without using any memorization? I promise you that if you take on this task, it will be far more rewarding to solve the cube using your brain than using memorization. You will have a much bigger sense of accomplishment. Okay? But you're also going to need to be a little bit patient. Okay? Because I'm going to be teaching you, as I said, individual skills, and skills take longer to learn. And that's why this is not just going to be one video, but one in a series of videos. Um, some people would say... Um, that using algorithms to solve the cube is like cheating. Um, I don't really agree with that. I think the beginner's method is, is how I learned and it's how most people learn, right? You, you learn by um, understanding the notation and then following the directions, right? Um, but I do think that using the algorithms kind of gives you a false sense of accomplishment because you're, you're using a solution that somebody else created um, as opposed to really doing it all on your own. Um, in my case, once I was able to solve the cube using the beginner's method in about a minute, I, I felt like I had mastered the 3x3. Three three. And so, like some of you, I then went on to, okay, oh, I know, and I'm going to try the bigger cubes, like 5x5 five five or 7x7 seven seven or, or some different types of cubes. And what I didn't realize that at the time was that, um, you know, in order to solve these bigger puzzles, I was using the same seven steps. I was using the same beginner's method, right? for solving the edges and the corners. Um, and so I wasn't really figuring out those bigger cubes or really figuring out the three by threes. And I, so I think that's the, the problem with the algorithms is that it gives you the ability to solve the cube without actually figuring it out, without actually having to really understand how the cube 
works. After all, the cube is a puzzle, and we don't solve puzzles by using a set of instructions, right? We, we take a puzzle and we work on it a little bit at a time until we figure it out. Um, and so if you decide to take this journey with me and watch these videos, I think that's how you should approach these videos, a little bit at a time. Um, some of the videos in this series are going to be lengthy, and hopefully that won't discourage you. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I like to go slowly and take my time and be thorough. And I'd rather you watch a 20-minute video one time than watch a 10-minute video several times because the 10-minute video is confusing because it was rushed. Um, so that's pretty much it. W one last thing I'd mention, um, it's going to be very, very helpful if you have a good cube when watching this. Um, because we're going to I'm going to be showing you different scenarios on the cube and I'm going to say, okay, take this red, white, and blue corner and twist it. And take this corner and twist it to the left, for example. Okay? Or I might even ask you to take out a piece and have to move it somewhere else if, uh, if you don't know how to do it um, some other way. Um, so you really are going to want a cube unlike the regular official Rubik's cube, um, which is kind of stiff. Um, this is a Diane cube. This is a pretty good one. You can get it for less than ten dollars right now on eBay. Uh, this is a Gu Hong version one, which speed cubers don't like because it doesn't have the torpedoes. But uh, I like this one just because the pieces will come out nice and easy if you want them to. Um, so just make sure you have something with corners that can twist easily. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot of time taking the cube apart. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, for the introduction, uh, I just wanted to give you a little information about the method. Again, it's going to be two separate things we're looking to accomplish. First, we're going to do the edge pieces, and then we're going to do the corner pieces. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to part two, where I'll do less talking and more teaching, and uh, show you how to solve the edge pieces, uh, starting with one solved side. In this case, I'll, it'll be the yellow side that I'll be working off. And uh, we'll look at solving these edge pieces in the middle layer. Okay, I uh, hope you'll stay with me and go ahead and click here for the next video.